my uh, science fair project is how do different lights affect uh, light tracking robot. My materials were two 3 volt vibration motors, three AA batteries, a AA battery holder, a breadboard, a MOS, some MOSFETs, toothbrush heads, a timer, a quarter watt kilo ohm resistor, a two th GL5528 photoresistors, a mini power switch, a fill light, a cell phone light, an LED light, a red LED, a blue LED, a yellow LED, and a green LED and masking tape. My hypothesis was I think different lights will affect the speed of the light tracking robot. My conclusion was uh, my hypothesis was correct. There was a small problem and the problem was that we needed one extra battery and the project was fun. I think a fun experiment would be to add two more motors in pa parallel with the other motors. Will it go faster or change steering? My results, the yellow and green LED lights uh, made the robot go just like don't it wasn't moving at all the blue was a failure it could not get to the target in a minute the red uh, we did it three times and the red the two times that we did it it was a failure but the first time we did it it got 21.94 seconds uh, the cell phone light got an average of 11.73 the LED flashlight got an average of 88.85, and the floodlight got an average of 6.96. Abstract. The phototaxis is the movement, movement in response to light towards or away from light. While I was re researching for the project, I read white light attracts more moths than yellow light. I tested, to, I tested different colors of light to see if that was true. I used my robot with I used the robot with light sensors and different colored lights and tested to see which light made my robot go fast the fastest. My hypothesis was correct. Fire inspired robots my robot mimic animal behavior and in the future robots will be able to copy these behaviors more easily. My procedure. One. All parts I got all my parts on the table. I started Starting with my breadboard, the red base plate, uh, I installed the MOSFETs, foot resistors, the switch, and all the wires. Using a double sided tape, I attached the battery pack and to the bottom of the breadboard. Using the hot glue gun, I attached the two motors, which are on the side, and the toothbrush heads. I, when I first tested it, it, the first test run I did was a failure. My dad examined the circuit and he saw a flaw. He corrected it with an extra AA battery. The second test run was a success. I gathered several light sources with different intensity and color. I measured a distance of 12 inches on the floor and marked it with tape. I measured how fast my robot traveled 12 inches when exposed to different lights using an iPad stopwatch. I found an average of three runs with each light source and recorded all data in my logbook, which I forgot at home. Uh, I took my robot to my grandfather's house for him to expect it, as he is an engineer. Research. Have you ever seen bugs around bright lights? That's called phototaxis. Moths use light to help them see and find their way around large dark objects. I read that moths follow white light better than yellow light, and I wanted to see if bio-inspired robots would do the same. Bio-inspired robots are robots that are based on animals found in nature and can do things like animals. The sticky bot is not what this is. Uh, can stick to walls like a gecko. After a lot of testing, scientists figure out that the thin ridges of the gecko's feet made it stick to the walls. Fire inspired robots help people in many ways. Howie Chaucet's robot snakes helped by getting into places humans and other machines can't. Scientists at Carnage Mellon University made, device, made a device that acts like the lower leg of a human. This device, this device helped people with neuro, neuromuscular diseases to walk. The big difference between real animals and fire inspired robots is that animals can feel and react to the surround to their surroundings and robots can't. <laughs>